Good afternoon and welcome to today's Mind the Chat. Uh, guest uh, uh, today is uh, Peter Jorgensen. Uh, Peter is partner at Maersk Pro. Hi, Peter. Welcome. Hi, Alberto. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, and I think it would be a pleasure to, to discuss with you. Again, uh, knowing what you guys are doing, uh, I believe there will be a lot of uh, interesting uh, topics to be discussed. You know, the world of corporate venture capital is, is growing more and more, and there are a lot of topics. I would call them more perennial questions, or $1 billion questions that are still vaulting around anytime we, we talk about corporate venture capital the likes of uh, strategics versus financial uh, horizons of investments, uh, KPIs, geographies, uh, maturity of startups, early versus later stage. Again, a lot of topics that uh, we will um, discuss together, focusing on the experience of Maersk Group. But first of all, uh, Peter, uh, I think it would be beneficial for our audience to get a brief description for the ones that do not know it. Uh, of uh, Maersk Group. Absolutely. So uh, the Maersk Group is a company headquarters in Denmark and founded in Denmark in 1904. So uh, we're into our, our next 100 years of, of, of business um, and uh, has over the years been, uh, been a conglomerate uh, in a sort of uh, old school kind of way. And since 2017, um, where a new strategy was uh, announced and pursued. We have been a full-blown logistics company, has sold off um, the, the other uh, business units we had within uh, uh, retail, oil, and, and a few other things. You may have seen a container or a ship with a seven-legged star uh, on the side. It's at least as a really, really fairly recognizable uh, name. Um, uh, if you uh, if you are in a neighborhood of a port or, or anything like that, yeah, um, yeah, they are quite uh, visible. Yes, can be yeah, missed. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, our sort of overall, you can say, that the vision of the company uh, is to become the um, uh, the integrator of end-to-end -end container logistics, um, and maybe one day it won't be a con you know be containers, but but again, that's right now what we are we are working with. And we're trying to broaden out from a very strong position in the ocean segment of, of, of shipping to also be much more uh, land-based and focused on really our customers supply chains from, from, from one end to the other. That's great. Uh, let's uh, narrow down the, the focus on the, the, the part of uh, the operation that we care more, that is the, bar, the part related to innovation. If I got it right, uh, you don't have uh, an head of innovation. Max doesn't have an R&D. I know that you have an IT department. And then there is Max Grow, that is the innovation vehicle of the company. Can you provide a sort of landscape of how innovation is dealt inside uh, Maersk? Absolutely. So, so I think one of the things that's important to know is that we, of course, have a lot of innovation activities that goes on under each uh, business unit. So our ports business, APM terminals, will have people in technical innovation and so forth, but they're part of the operations or the safety or even the, the IT setup uh, for, for, that, for that matter. We do have a CIO who oversees a lot of our digital innovation uh, within the uh, SD. I won't say we're becoming a technology company, that's probably stretching it a bit, but, but as, as, as the whole sort of transportation and logistics business uh, industry finds its way into the, uh, the, the 21st century. Um, and then uh, we have uh, Maersk Growth, which is uh, the external innovation arm of Maersk. Um, and we were formed in 2017. Um, we went through a lot of thinking around what does it mean? Uh, and, and, and one of the things that we felt it meant was uh, making venture investments. Uh, so you can say the one of the tools in, a, in an external innovation arms toolbox uh, is making investments as a, as a CVC, uh, in a lack of a better word, um, which is what Maersk, uh, Maersk Growth is doing. Uh, but of course, I should emphasize there's a lot of in-house innovation going on. It's just not organized in a sort of innovation pillar, if you like. No, again, I think that probably if you ask Google and Apple, they don't have 
an head of innovation because they say, but we do innovation on a daily basis. We don't need to have someone that is working that all of us is working. I think it's most of the, the score is established companies that are trying to emphasize the need to redesign the company, restructure the company, diversify through innovation that brings to put uh, uh, a dedicated unit uh, focused on innovation, uh, chief innovation officer at the C in the C suite, because that is in a way to emphasize that they need to have a sort of rebirth. And so, but yeah. obviously, innovation is, is part of our everyday operation. But this new approach is the part that we are mostly interested. In. And that is mostly not, they say, it's not on US tech companies discussion because those companies do not have. It's mostly on our side that we're trying to bridge in the gap and going back into, into innovation. Let's focus on mass grow. Um, if I think uh, is uh, an evergreen fund, what's the size of the investment that you do on an annual basis? How many portfolio companies? How many exits? Give us some numbers. Absolutely. So uh, as I be, we once we formed in 2017, our first investment investment was done uh, in May 18. Uh, so so three years ago. Yeah. Uh, we've now invested into 26 companies. Uh, we got a few and uh, and few in the pipeline for wrapping up here within the next few days. So, if you interview me at the uh, at the end of June, it'll be it'll definitely be a higher number. Um, we are, track. <laughs> good. Uh, and yes, we are we are evergreen in the sense that we 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 invest off the balance sheet. We're not a fund structure, but we do operate sort of uh, to keep ourselves on our toes in 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 a thinking around sort of fund structures as well, um, and um, so that we. You know, sort of, don't sort of lose focus on on what needs to happen as well when you when you make investments. Um, we have invested sort of on an average between thirty to forty million dollars a year, um, and uh, you know it 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 goes up and down a little bit. We don't we won't reveal the specific tickets in uh, yeah, in, in that sense. But of course, as um, as valuations are going up, then uh, our average ticket size also goes up. Um, and uh, let's say that we are probably two to two and a half million dollars is our typical first check. Um, yes. And then, of course, you will have the outliers because if you multiply that with 26, then you you're not getting to the amount I mentioned. But that's because we've done follow up investments in uh, in a range of our portfolio companies as well. That's correct. That's correct. And again, you just touched touch the, the first big uh, perennial question that is evergreen versus structured CVC fund. The pros and cons. What's your take? Obviously, you have an evergreen, but what you think is, is better this way and what could be probably better the other way around? So I think there's uh, at least again, and this is not uh, a, a huge study I've, I've made, but sort of the empirical evidence uh, of, of, of what we've picked up is in the US, quite often the, 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 they're structured as a one LP structure. The company is just the only LP. It allows you to copy completely a, a VC playbook if you like uh, and also from remuneration structures in uh, in in Europe it seems to be a little bit more off the balance sheet and 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 and, and so forth and um, I think there is some elements of the the fund structure that uh, is is a positive uh, not the least around remuneration but also that you know that the capital is essentially allocated <laughs> it cannot really be pulled um, and that's an exposure point that, that a lot of CVCs over the years have found themselves in. Um, and of course, if you are co-investing with a CVC, you want it to be at least relatively stable, not necessarily follow, you know, from a from a C to a round F for that matter, but at least have a, you know activity more than 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 one round. The benefit that we have of, of the, the, one of the benefits I see by by having it set up as we are, which is off the balance sheet, is that. Once we work with a principal allocation, and therefore you can say a sort of fund, um, then we also have the opportunity to ask for outside of normal uh, investments. And that means that suddenly we can get, you know, maybe a, a ticket of 15, 20, 25 million dollars in that sense. Um, and it's not a problem because it's not linked to a, f a fund governance. It's not an exposure issue where you don't want to have too much invested into the same company and so forth. So it does offer some some flexibility, provided that of course your 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 uh, your leadership and CFO or, or whoever it is that needs to find that money also understand that there's a um, that there's a process 
uh, around this. Um, so I think there's some there's some pros and cons. Nothing is solved. I'd say that the the most important piece is that you as a co-investor, both the startup but also the investors you're with, that you have an element of stability, um, so that it doesn't go, you know, you're not in and out depending on how the weather, uh, you know, the wind blows at the uh, at the C-suite, and that's an important factor. No, that that's uh, again is a great topic, and uh, you mentioned you on end uh, having. The capital pre-located, meaning you know there is a fund, this is close. That's the money that I have, and that's I know what are the building blocks I can build my my portfolio. I know that I have to keep a certain percentage for the follow-ups, and so I know how much investment I can do, and uh, and that gives you stability, and you don't have the problem to renegotiate on an annual basis the budget or the allocated capital. And you are pro- even more protected by something that, unfortunately, our organization happens frequently. It's called reorganization. Yeah. On the other end, and that is unfortunately happen more frequently than than probably was is needed. And on the other end, on the, as you mentioned, you may have probably more flexibility because again, when you are able to to sell the case of a company, and probably that requires a follow up. Uh, that is significant and probably out of probably the the, the possibility that uh, you might have having your own fund with a given size. Uh, that's something that probably might get approved as soon as you are able to prove the, the venture case, and that's uh, that's another interesting angle that you you pursued. Okay, uh, going back to your portfolio, or geographical, which is the geography. I remember you say to me last time we spoke that uh, you are opportunistically global, uh, you know, opportunistically global investment approach. What does it mean? How do you invest? Yeah, uh, I guess we're all opportunistic in this space. <laughs> um, so I think one of the things that we set up most growth that we wanted to figure out was, um, and I think a lot of CVCs and a lot of corporates. Um, go through the motions and struggle a bit with deal flow. How do I create deal flow? Do I need to invest in other funds? Do I need to hire someone? Do I need to be part of uh, various um, um, accelerators? You know, you name it. And one of the things that we felt that we were uh, born with was a very, very strong brand name. Now, I've been with Maersk since uh, for almost 25 years, and I've been doing projects and businesses all over the world. I know what that name does when you know for opening doors um and 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 we felt that that that, that's an asset we had so we went out and start knocking on doors um we look all doors opened we didn't get invited to all investments but all doors opened at least and that meant that we could go out and and create networks and, and and deal flow also through investing so geographically we decided that we would focus on europe and north america uh for uh Proximity, you can say that in terms of proximity, the, the US is, is 10 hours away in a plane, but there's a concentration of both investors and startups. And that means that, you know, uh, I got I got six portfolio companies in the US. So now that we can hopefully not start traveling again, I will be in the US maybe for 10, 14 days, you know, eight, eight, nine meetings a day, including breakfast and dinners, a little bit of fun in between as well. Um, so you can be quite effective covering your ecosystem. So North America and, and Europe is what we sort of focused on in building that network and that credibility with other investors. Uh, we do have two investments in Australia. Um, one of them came on the back of actually another investment we've made. So that's a network um, effect uh, in, 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 the, in the proof of that. Um, and then we will look at geographies opportunistically in the sense that when we feel that Musk has a strong presence that we can piggyback on either big local team or big local business. So in some of those geographies where we see uh, uh, it could be Indian, India, sorry, it could be part of Africa. Um, and very soon we will be revealing uh, our first investment uh, from a, in, a, in an Africa-based company. Um, but but for us, it, it is about... Um, it, it's not about identifying that last sort of, you know, you know, just that phenomenal financial thing somewhere, uh, a needle in a haystack maybe. It's just as much about us seeing a lot of things. Um, and if not only for investing, could be we come across uh, really interesting companies where we can see a collaboration opportunity for our 
core business, and 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 that's part of it as well. Uh, we also to act as a, I'm not going to call it scout because I think that's the wrong way of putting it, but but of course do see things that we don't necessarily think is venture cases or maybe they have investors enough. Um, but Merce should not be cheated out of having access to or seeing um, uh, those innovations because that's what I mean. We had external innovation arm. Yes, we invest primarily, but we can also facilitate intros. And that's what happens um, on a, I'm not going to say regular basis because it's a little bit more ad hoc for, for, for that matter. Um, but yeah, to us, it's about proximity and uh, some scale because we are very active in building our own networks. Uh, Peter, you haven't mentioned China in your geographies. So China is uh, is a phenomenal place. I uh, I started traveling there for business in the uh, in the early noughties, and 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 what I've seen sort of you know, you know grow and develop there is is absolutely phenomenal. And Maersk has had a lot of activities there over the years. And there's no doubt that this is a place with a lot of good uh, tech and innovations coming out of it. But it's also a place where one you need to be there physically and be ready to do deals and do them quick. Um, and uh, uh, I'll go as far as saying that the, that the deals are made uh, via WeChat almost very, very rapidly. Um, and we just don't feel that we are equipped to to match that, neither the speed nor probably some of the valuations. And then um, there are some language barriers, uh, which again will require you to be on site. And we probably have to set up a team uh, locally, um, and there'll be a good reasons, a lot of good reasons. I'm pretty sure for doing it. We just felt that we won't say had enough opportunities, but we certainly didn't want to stretch ourselves uh, any thinner than 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 we already were. But I mean, very clear, very exciting place, but but also a place where you know, um, out of sight, out of mind, uh, uh, and that's uh, it's it's really important to be there. And uh, just a quick comment about Australia. Uh, how's the ecosystem down there? What does it look like? So the uh, the ecosystem is full of, of uh, a lot of entrepreneurs as well, uh, and um, a lot of good investors. Uh, and at the same time, also some um, some opportunities where the one investment we got, one of the investments we got, is a company called Offload, which is essentially they're taking a European uh, tech stack from a company in Europe. Um, and uh, taking that to Australia and a building on top of an existing tech stack there. And that's, that's been possible because it's an area that has not been, been, been looked at in trucking, probably because it's a bit boring uh, for that matter. But some, uh, some, great, uh, some great people on the two teams that we have uh, invested in down there. Um, and of course, they got a proximity to the region, uh, Oceania and, and, and other parts where, uh, you know, into Indonesia or Malaysia, places like that, which is um, and close connectivity. Well, it's still a 10 hour flight almost to, to Singapore, but at least again, they have some opportunities in, uh, in, in, in that space. And we're also seeing more Australian entrepreneurs uh, market wise moving into the US. Um, again, geographically, it's far, at least on a, on a map, uh, but, but, but the mentality and, and the way to collaborate and work is, is, is certainly not too dissimilar. Perfect. Very interesting. And uh, again, you are typically leading the deals, or you're most of you are just uh, participating in the investment gang. Yeah. So I think we have led about twenty five percent of the companies we've invested in uh, those rounds. Um, uh, it's not a requirement for us, uh, but, but it's it's also sometimes a necessity uh, to get in uh, with a sufficiently large ticket in the in the early stages. Um, but we do tend to, again, to, well, I guess you figured out from the 75% remaining to be sort of co-leads or, or, or followers in, 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 uh, in that way. Um, we are coming in with a different value or different type of value add other than the money. And a lot of investors will see that as beneficiary. And some will uh, look at it and say, you know, we don't want to crowd the place uh, or have the, uh, you know, um, or have these, these strategic investors at this stage. Um, Sometimes uh, CVCs are being looked at as, as having, I won't say deep pockets, but at least pockets that are sufficiently deep so that they can enter at later stages. Yeah. Um, and then and then rather than trying to get them in and, 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 and small tickets or something, then um, 
you know they 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 come in later. But we are we are pretty flexible. Um, we don't really invest alone. Um, so irrespective of whether we lead or not, we will, we would want to see other people around the table. Uh, we think that's a that's a healthy combo of having someone with a say. I'm not going to say we're not disciplined, but somebody with a with a financial <laughs> discipline of being, you know, a a very a traditional VC, um, and also bringing in some slightly different networks and perhaps more expertise in fundraising, um, and we are bringing in uh, we're bringing in something else, so we find it quite complementary, and it's also the experience we have in 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 the boardrooms and the engagements with you in general that 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 we can bring something in if it's not ourselves here for the team, then it might be some colleagues. Um, some just are, you know, um, we're right. I think we've onboarded a couple of thousand IT people in the last 12 months, for instance. So oh. I can find you, you know, our head, our CIO or, or will be able to tell you how you scale and onboard. Actually, even though we're not a startup, because we have done something which is probably more difficult at to transform a company at the same time as you're expanding and rebuilding. Uh, certain functions. So, so we may have some expertise that can actually be brought in that you for sure don't have in 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 a financial investor necessarily. But they have other expertise elements, right? And that's the important part. It it becomes more symbiotic. And uh, any episode when uh, being a strategic investor prevented you to enter the deal? Uh, Sometimes you are perceived as not welcomed. Which situations? <laughs> um, I I think the VC industry is a brutal industry, but I'm also not sure that 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 you know, um, it's a little bit like when uh, when you didn't win a deal, you know, a commercial deal, it's always your price that's wrong, right? Now everybody <laughs> knows that's just not true, but but you know that's a that's a very convenient. Uh, so you know whether it's oversubscribed or this and that, some of them and and so forth. So we we. We, we don't really feel that if we've been part of a process that, you know, then, then we're part of it, right? You just typically don't get into to, to, to those deals uh, where somebody has some view uh, on, on, on whether it makes sense or, or, or not. So I don't think we, we, we are, we're generally let in, but again, I mean, we don't know about the deals we don't know about. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, so, so for sure we'll, some will disqualify us, uh, you know, uh, in the, and, and not consider it, um, but we have a lot of conversations. Um, and I think one of the one of the challenges is what is the you know what is the measurement and 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 not to go into the KPIs yet, but you know what is it that we want to get out of an investment? Um, yeah. And and we have from the get go set up three criteria for us essentially yes. to through that is venture case, strategic fit. And then what we call rocket fuel. Rocket fuel essentially is the value that we can add back to the company one way or the other. And 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 that discipline is important. Rocket fuel, you can say, is our right to play because, you know, if it's just money, then there might be better investors out there. But the two first ones are really, whether the strategic fit is there or not, a strategic fit cannot make a mediocre venture case, a brilliant venture case. It's, it's, just, not, it's just not possible. And then, of course, the assessment of venture cases is as subjective as you can get, right? Um, some will have turned down what we invest in and vice versa. So, but but we always look at the venture case first. And if we can, and that also means that if we believe in the venture case, then we're going into this with the same fundamentals as a financial investor because we need the venture case to to actually succeed. And that means that we actually aligned up front uh, in terms of the approach to the company. Uh, if in doubt, the startup wins. Um, we don't really have those, but but you know you could you could have that. The strategic fit is for us, you know, it, it's 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 just as much as a uh, let's say a fund could be doing um, B two B SaaS only. That's a criteria, okay? We do uh, supply chains. That's pretty wide, I guess, but also something that we need to see eventually having some relevance to Merck slash the industry that Merck is in. So. You know, um, it, it's it's really a filter criteria more than anything else because the starting point is there has to be a compelling venture case. You made uh, in our our prior discussion a very 
valid point uh, about this perennial question, strategic versus financial. You love uh, more mem or dad or something like that. This is the, the typical uh, situation we are in. And you make a very good um, point uh, when you say that uh, the strategic fit, uh, yes, is relevant for the first time investments, but is crucial for the decision regarding follow up investments. Can you elaborate a bit more? Because I find yeah. uh, it was on a perspective uh, that when I heard from you, you, you opened my mind. And so. so so I think the, the, the first thing to say is that the history books are full of CVCs who have failed. <laughs> I was part of uh, the first CVC that Maersk had back in 2000. It was called Venture IT. We did Venture and IT. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and one of the elements is that they've sort of done this ad hoc. They made an investment without knowing why. And then when the next round came, they didn't or and, and it's been, in, uh, you know, unstable. This means that you're not a very reliable partner for 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 your for both the startup because it, it may just look like you've lost faith in the company, even though that's not necessarily reason that's not helping anyone. So for us, it was important in the beginning to say we invest and we expect to do two, uh, maybe, you know, two to three rounds uh, and and we need to do that. Uh, in order to follow on on these investments. But the main difference between a, say, financial strategic investor is a couple of things. One, I will not get any strategic value of a company that goes bankrupt. So it still needs to be yielding financial returns. But I might not need, you know, 5x in, in, in immediately. Maybe we can do a little bit less and so forth. But ultimately, it still needs to make returns. Otherwise, you're not going to get strategic value. The other part is that you may come to a point where a company you invested in two to three years ago have developed and pivoted as startups do in a direction that is maybe different from what you thought, or even the companies of Maersk in this, this, this incident have developed in another area said, you know, this area which we've done investments in is not of interest anymore for whatever reason. That means that that strategic test of should we continue to fund a company um, will say, no, I mean, this is not interesting anymore. Financially, we could still invest, but the biggest, uh, you know, component is that the strategic test uh, will have to be done at some point, uh, and that might outweigh the uh, the financial um, test and say, you know what, this is still a, a financial winner, um, but maybe because that's not, you know, ultimately the same goal necessarily as as, as your co-investors, then you decide not to follow. But I think, again, back to the two things, they still need to make financial returns, right? So ultimately, we do need to look at this through the same lens as a VC, uh, you know, pretty much. And we do need to do, uh, let's say, two to three rounds, uh, but at least two, in the same way as your other early stage investors do. Um, and then, of course, we need to help and explain why we would not continue investing um, uh, we have one investment so far of this entire portfolio where we decided not to follow for that reason. Uh, it was very, very understandable and credible. And I even uh, helped the company in talking to some new uh, potential investors, and they all completely understood the uh, the rationale. Uh, what's important is that this is not just about us. This is about the company we have invested in and also the investors around the table that has shown the, 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 the faith and the trust in letting us in as part of a, a syndicate, right? Um, and you have to understand as a CBC that you're part of an ecosystem uh, and that your actions will have reactions and there might be something you didn't expect. And that's why it's so important that you really think through what you do um, and are, you know, the evergreen component also needs to be sure so that you can make decisions with some light of sight two to three years out or, or, or something like that. Um, Talking about, uh, you, you, you mentioned the word site. And so let me turn to the other big question is horizons. Again, CVCs, uh, typically they sh are supposed to look ahead of business, what is called horizon two, horizon three, rather than horizon one. The problem here is that uh, when you're looking to invest into something that is ahead of business, it's very difficult to produce returns or produce an impact on the PL, produce an impact on the business. And then from a corporate perspective, it's difficult to understand the value that you are 
putting on the table because you know it will come it will come it will come remember there are some also in literature there are a lot of books of people waiting for something to come and uh, wait 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 at a certain point people can uh, lose patience and no longer become what is called the passion capital passion management or passion ceo and say okay guys what you've been doing this far what are the results you unpack out in your pnl you are done particularly with an evergreen fund the, the risk is even large on the other hand if you as a cbc you are investing on horizon one you are not doing your the job that you were supposed to do because you're just uh, supporting the the business lines and that is not exactly what is you so and that's put so it's, it's, it's a complicated situation to be in and so the next immediate question is what kpis you are using for assessing your activities and showing the value uh, that you are putting on the table what are the criteria that you use also in the internal communication that is even more important than external communication for showing the value of the the job that you every day do for the company what's this perception of your work and what are the criteria again it's a big topic it's not just for you again for uh, across the board is one of the hottest topic there so we've spoken to quite a few CVCs over the years, right? And and are getting, I won't say a different answer per CVC, but almost, right? And and it, it depends on the company you're in, what's the background, how how technology driven is a company, and 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 and, and so forth. Uh, some have invested in, let's say, what you thought was scope two, but you know horizon two, but but ended up being horizon one pretty quickly, and then. You're stepping other people's toes and so forth. So, so I, I'd say our our sort of experience, and this is um, we had a plan to start with, and we've adjusted the plan a bit uh, afterwards. But fundamentally, we started out with saying, here's the profile from an investment perspective. Here are the things that we expect to get out of it. These were this was verbatim. This was no numbers, no nothing. We said we'll return the money, we'll get the money back at some point, right? Let's say. One one x, uh, you know, it won't be wasted. Um, but the average hold period is still seven years on a on a on a venture investment. Um, so we've been very clear on that that line of sight. Don't have anything. Uh, don't ask us to produce any specifics in the first couple of years. Uh, and that actually was 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 accepted completely. Um, Musk is also a, a, a you know we got a balance sheet of I don't know fifty five billion dollars or something like that. So what you've investing here is obviously it's not a very big amount relative to that. So it may be easier decision to make uh, for that sense, but we got uh, some air cover from our CEO to say, go out, experiment, figure it out. Um, our thesis was that we could make some investments that would be interesting and we could create deal flow and create a name for ourselves. That uh, we have certainly ticked. Now is the next iteration. Now we need to get into, okay, now start formalizing this in a, in a, in a, in a way where you're actually showing us how many new, let's say, collaborations have we done? Uh, what exits have been there? Because it is a financial measure. Um, what do people say about you? So uh, conduct a NPS uh, internally, for instance, on, on, on the people that we're working with. Um, and, and, and all that is, is actually, <laughs> I don't think there's a template for this. You need to adjust it to what you do. So what we're doing now as a couple of examples of, of, of going forward here, is that um, we have formalized now our strategic value thesis when we invest into X number of boxes. Uh, this will go through uh, on a quarterly basis, we'll assess it where we are. Some of it may not be relevant for, for 12 months for that matter, right, as the company develops, uh, but we'll ongoing have this. This boils into sort of an output from a reporting perspective uh, to, uh, to, our, to our senior leadership that it is in relation to uh, the uh, both the deals we're making, the insights, and 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 a few other things that we're hoping to uh, to to show. But we have not gotten through that in the first three years of our of our of our, of our sort of uh, life. So it is a two-tier process. We believe we we've I've got to say aced <laughs> the, the the investment part, and now, now it's the other part. Um, and the CFO will have one measure. Your CEO will have another, your CEO will have a third, and so forth and so forth. And this is what gets really, really difficult. I will say that we have made um, uh, two exits. A third one is coming very soon. 
and and that has proven um, that has given something, right? Because now you're actually turning something uh, into something else. Uh, one of the exits uh, came just after Maersk, together with the startup, had developed a white label solution for return logistics. So that was a very concrete example of 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 of, of something. But KPIs, you need to have a financial KPI in there. It, 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 it shouldn't be a freebie, uh, but instead of targeting 3x, maybe you should target 1 to 2x for that matter. But you need to have it in there. Uh, otherwise, it won't uh, it won't make sense. You probably have to have a, a long, long term turnaround around when you are um, self-funding. Uh, so essentially, once, once you get to the point where your excess will fund the next investments and so forth, instead of just keep adding capital, you can do that, of course, but but that will have to be a different choice um, in that sense to expand your activities. Um, so you cannot avoid that in terms of it, um, but it's really difficult. Uh, everyone I've spoken to says that after your first exit or your first sort of uh, implementation of a startup's uh, um, solution into part of the businesses, a lot of things just becomes easier. Um, and, and and so I was going to say I recommend you get one of those pretty early on, but the reality is that 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 you don't. Uh, it's going to take some time. Um, and our sort of let's say it takes it 18 to 24 months from the first investment to um, a company may be mature enough to deliver something to the business, and that's your horizon uh, three or two and a half or whatever you want to call it for that matter. I think what's important is. We do not invest in solution that solves a current problem. That should be done by M&A activity or your own uh, in-house innovation, because then we're not pushing the envelope and up, um, and then we are also not using our access to the market to see what's going on in, you know, disruption. <laughs> well, I guess that's a not a not, not a space necessarily, but. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're just looking at the, the and, and fundamentally, I mean, I, I I don't think we have an established growth vision around that, but but I think we share this, most of us share it essentially at an individual level. Entrepreneurs are better at identifying problems and solutions to them. And as, and, and, and therefore, if you look out far enough, uh, it will only be entrepreneurs that will be, be having a go at it. Um, they will also be wrong. <laughs> we know how many that fails. Um, but they're just better at that, um, no doubt about it. Um, Question, do you consider the fact that some of your portfolio company uh, might be acquired by Maersk as a potential KPI of the, the fact that you are pointing out in the right direction? Yes, uh, so, so I think it's worth just keeping in mind what I said in the beginning. We invest, you know, it, it, the main important thing here is the company. If the comp if it's right for the company to be acquired by Maersk, good. That becoming a mission in itself may drive the wrong behavior on how we interact with the company. And that's important that it's not. No, that's... But that, that said, um, listen, any investor in a company is going to be a good acquirer uh, because they know the business, it's easy to implement. Um, the DD might be a couple of phone calls, right? I mean, the reps and warranties can be pretty short and so forth. <laughs> there can be a price. There can be a pricing element in terms of market price and so forth, and how that works. And 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 but that's a different component. But it's very clear that um, Maersk acquiring one or more portfolio companies will be seen as a success because it's then. I'm not going to call it pre M and A because I think that sort of you know angles may be slightly different. Different, but ultimately, that's why you want to invest early. You get line of sight of it, right? tech you can dd the people the team the solutions during the way and then essentially you get a discount on the full acquisition price because you own some of it already uh, let me put a you know different angle because that's something that i've um, it's a discussion i have with some of your colleagues from another cbc fund they add uh, they actually they have some good experiences of uh, with the parent company acquiring uh, some of the portfolio company but they had uh, actually the other, the opposite argument that was, you guys have contributed to rising the price 
of the company that we are buying now because you put money we have them to grow and becoming more expensive now we pay more money because of you <laughs> how do you yeah. <laughs> it's uh yeah i mean i think um uh yes i mean that 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 argument can be made um i think the the reality is that uh so again, this is very specific to the to the to the mother company, if you like. But fundamentally, a startup still needs to be in a shape where it actually either, depending on what it is, but it needs to add some revenue and other bits. It needs to be in a shape where you can implement it and integrate it into a a mother company. And there's a lot of folks who who will have the idea that you can do that after you know if you just did a funding round that valued the company at 20 million. Well, you should be able to buy the company for 20 million, but nobody thinks about the option value, right? That company will probably cost 100 million if you take it off the market now. And as soon as you buy it, the the founders might just piss off, and then you don't have a company. So, so the reality is that the maturity of the company to be able to be bought without having adverse consequences on it, right? The co- corporate destroys it. I mean. Look at how many corporates have actually merged and, and destroyed value just for merging maturing companies. Um, so, so, but I, it, it's it's true. There's an element in that. Our argument would be that fundamentally that that a good company would always be able to attract business and money. So it's not us who makes the company. It's the company that makes the company. Uh, so if we're part of it, isn't that just great? Uh, if we get a little bit of, of return on the business that we, uh, you know, give to that company, um, they, they will find a way. I mean, um, there is a uh, <laughs> there is this uh, line that you can hear in corporate over and said, I've been in corporate for many years, right? So I can sort of, uh, you know, accuse myself a little bit for it. But it's that if we don't, if we don't fund it, it will never happen, right? It's just, of course, it will happen. Any good solution will happen. <laughs> I mean, you know, whether we participate with funding or not. Um, but yeah, I can understand some of the valuations you see in startups that the uh, the M&A folks, uh, uh, you know, are, are really crying and thinking about how we have helped actually driving up the price. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I love the corporate world because it's so rich of all these uh, sub environments that uh, keep you busy. Let yeah. me end our interesting conversation quoting yourself and asking you to elaborate. I remember the last time we spoke, you said something that um, uh, I like it a lot and say, you say, talking about the need to have a CVC, you say, in reality, you need to have a common belief that makes sense to have a CVC. And uh, this uh, common belief uh, is not supposed to be backed by quarterly KPIs. <laughs> Can you elaborate a bit more? <laughs> uh, yes. So, I mean, as I said a little bit earlier, we had about, you know, we, the first couple of years, we had so-called air cover from, from our CEO which meant that we really didn't have to justify. There was a decision made to do this, but we wanted to back that up. And that's why we had sort of that five to seven year vision of what most growth would look like from an investment perspective and, and, and other bits and pieces. But what you essentially need is you need to anchor in what's the strategic value you think you're going to get? What's the financial returns? What's this and that? And that's a vision and that's a long term thing. It cannot be tested day to day, week to week, quarter to quarter. Well, your financials can in principle, but until you exit, it's just paper money, right? So it's it's yeah, it's right. in that way. So so the first thing you need to do is everybody needs to hold hands together, jump over that cliff, recognizing that you're building the plane a little bit as you're you know, <laughs> skydiving towards the ground. Um, and you should not test your belief, you know, unless something very dramatically changes. It's the same thing as if you have a long-term vision strategy for a a big corporate, unless something really, 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 really changes in the world or anything like that, why would you change that overall mission? Vision, you would adjust, but you're not changing this belief that is the red, you know, the beacon for a company. It's the same thing for a CVC, and of course, you need to start building up your tests as you become better and smarter. After five years. You do need to be able to test, show some test results, if you like, on exits uh, or things like that. But, but you really have to have this shared vision up front, because if you don't, then I argue, and I think there's enough empirical evidence to do that, that you're basically questioning 
a long-term vision by short-term measurements again and again and again and again. And then the CVCs will not happen. You will stop investing. Startups will hate you. And you will be, this is a very small ecosystem at the end of the day. Huh? It's, it's not very big, even though there's a lot of billions being invested. A lot of people know a lot of people. If you are inconcise, if the way you approach this, you will be, I mean, you will be, uh, you will be banished, right? You will, you will just not be allowed to invest anymore. Um, they, they won't let you in. Um, so my recommendation is be sure that you have this rather than, I'd rather say, don't do this unless you have some common belief of why you're doing it. Um, because you risk making some errors and mistakes that will actually have much longer lasting impact than a couple of, you know, misfired investments. And that's why we spent a bit more than a year before we made our first investment, because we wanted to get all that right so that we all knew what direction we were looking in, the line of sight, the mission, including the people that was in the team, what they signed up to. Final, final uh, question. Uh, you mentioned the topic of reputation because again, it's a small village. The, the BC is a small uh, multi-billion dollar village. <laughs> and uh, how much is important uh, not to, to put any unfair clauses in the deals that you participate in? There are any strategic uh, clauses, uh, vetoes or whatever that you typically guys put in? Early stage, also in some follow-ups. Any any examples here? Uh, we don't. We invest exactly on the same terms as a VC, um, and um, we we you know we we don't think it's uh, first of all it doesn't quite make sense if I say it's the company first and you know Musk afterwards if you like. If we put in clauses that essentially limits the the freedom or anything like that. Um, if a company needs to pivot, it needs to pivot. Um, we have examples of where we where we have a clause that says that something that is very strategically important to Musk, that's why we invested, that uh, we would like to have a, say, first right of negotiating if the mm -hmm. company wants to sell or, 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 or exit an area. But again, it, 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 it doesn't give you, I mean, I actually think it fits quite well into this lo logic about an investor being a good acquirer. So why would you, why would you not pursue that anyway? It doesn't put any commitments on the company. Uh, we have no veto rights and blocking rights to stop a particular, uh, you know, we vote if we're on the boards with, with the, with the board members. Um, and, and I think that's important. And, and in terms of reputation, Maersk has five values, which were written down in 2003 after they've been, we've been living by them by a hundred years, but now they were written down by our, uh, our founder, our son of the founder who's really built the company, he's passed away a few days ago. One of those five values is our name. And that tells you everything about how important it is. Perfect. I think it's been a brilliant conversation, a lot of uh, insights as uh, usually happens when uh, I, I talk to you. Peter, thank you <laughs> so much for, for sharing your insights and we'll definitely stay in touch and all the best for your next year soon to, to happen investments. Bye. Thanks a lot, Alberto. Bye.